Hunter Biden's art dealer singing like a canary, blowing up the White House's narrative over Hunter's art dealings. George Burgess telling the House Oversight Committee that the White House never communicated anything to him about ethics requirements governing Hunter Biden's art sales. Exposing a lie from a 2021 New York Times article that claimed the Biden White House was uh, helping to develop a system for Hunter Biden to sell his pieces of art without him or anyone in the administration knowing who bought them. Typical nonsense from the New York Times that literally works for the Biden administration. In fact, during his recent closed door interview, Burgess stated that Hunter knew most of the identities of the people who were buying his art. No kidding. They were Democrat donors, including Hunter's attorney, Kevin Morris, who was just with him in front of the House Oversight Committee, uh, and also Elizabeth Hirsch Neftali, a woman who was appointed to a very prestigious commission for the pres preservation of America's heritage uh, back in 2022, appointed by Joe Biden. Oh, so you buy a little art, you get a nice presidential appointment, you can brag about to your friends and get connected. I see how it works. Burgess called it unusual, saying a gallerist does not typically tell the artist who is buying their work. So not only did they not do anything to protect from this obvious grift, they did things that were bizarre for any artist, which is revealing who's buying the art. George Burgess also revealing uh, that uh, he has talked on the phone and met in person with Joe Biden while he was selling Hunter Biden's art, even attending a wedding that the Bidens had at the White House. More of that no evidence of Joe Biden's involvement, right? Congressman James Comer joins us now, chairman of the House Oversight Committee, uh, who started, uh, who interviewed uh, Hunter's art dealer. Sir, it's, it's good to have you on. I guess we shouldn't be too surprised. Uh, tell us more. Yeah, well, I mean, we were surprised. We actually thought the White House did at least make contact with George Burgess and set some phony ethics rule in place to so, so they could say they had some type of ethics uh, in place. But we were shocked to learn that George Burgess never communicated with anyone from the White House. He, he knew nothing about an ethics thing. I don't guess he even watched the news or read the New York Times. He didn't even know there was ever even an article written that there was an ethics plan in place approved by the White House. So this is another lie by the White House. And again, we also learned that Joe Biden met with him and that George Burgess even attended the wedding at the White House. So uh, every player that's involved in these schemes with the Bidens, Joe Biden is a central figure. He's always front and center. This was proven again with this deposition with George Burgess. It's just amazing. <laughs> They're so cocky, and they think they can just get away with everything that they try to do, and they just don't care. It's, 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 it's actually entertaining to watch the, the stupidity and how, how easy it would be to just follow some kind of basic protocol here and at least give themselves, you know, the, the appearance, you know, of trying to do the right thing. And they don't even care about that. Hunter is just so arrogant after getting away with it for so long. And I want to get an update on Hunter and, and this, this closed-door deposition uh, that he's been trying to avoid uh, House Judiciary uh, and your committee oversight uh, with fresh new subpoenas to force Hunter Biden to finally testify behind closed doors. His legal team says they would comply if they got a new subpoena. What, what was the point of that? What is happening here? Well, it looks like uh, Abby Lowell's been humbled. Uh, he's essentially come crawling back. Uh, their publicity stunts didn't resonate with the public. I think the public sees what you and I see, Rob. Why won't he come in and answer the questions? I mean, this is a simple request. Uh, this is a major investigation. We've been thorough. We've been substantive. We've done everything the right way. And the bottom line, we can win in court. Anywhere, uh, anytime someone defies a subpoena or uh, tries to uh, object or obstruct, and this heads to court, we will win. We've done this the right way. Abby Lowell sees that. Now he's come back and said, all right, all right, we'll come, we'll do the deposition, yeah. and we're negotiating on a date. But look, if they don't give us a date yeah. uh, in the next few weeks, then we will proceed with, with contempt. Uh, we're ready to go with contempt. The votes are there. Uh, but at the end of the day, Rob, I want to bring, and so does Jim Jordan, we want to bring Hunter Biden in. Uh, this has been a, a very thorough investigation. We have hundreds of specific questions about specific transactions and specific meetings that Hunter Biden took with our enemies around the world that resulted in millions of dollars going into the Biden family's back pocket. So uh, we believe if we have to wait three or three more weeks, three or four more weeks to get him in for a deposition, we'll do it. But they know 
that they're going to be held in contempt and they know that Merrick Garland will have to treat Hunter Biden the exact same way he's treated Peter Navarro and Steve Bannon. That's a given. Abby Lowell's finally figured that out. And uh, here we are in a, in a very strong position moving forward with this deposition. Mm. Interesting stuff. And, and just ending with the breaking news that apparently they found a little cocaine on Hunter's illegal gun in the case out west. Uh, we're going to have to talk about that uh, a little bit more another time. But that's, uh, that's the breaking news tonight. Congressman, we appreciate you coming on. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.